If your PC is air-cooled and it's getting kind of toasty in there when you put in a new graphics card, you might be asking yourself, is there a better way for me to optimize my airflow and does adding any additional fans help with cooling? Today, we're gonna to look into that question and try to find an answer. <laughs> so inside my Be Quiet Darkbase Pro 900, we've got a 3090 RTX Founders Edition as well as a 5900X CPU. Uh, the cooler is an Octua D15S and we've got just the stock cooling fans in the system right now. So what we're looking at right now is we have two basic air intakes at the front, right along here, drawing in fresh cool air. Then we have the RTX 3090 pulling in air from the bottom through the cooler, as well as pulling air in from the bottom over here. We then have the Noctua fan pulling air through the heatsink, and then we have the Be Quiet fan exhausting air out the rear of the case. Now when you look at airflow and ventilation, when you think of like your home or an office building, there's a lot of work in engineering and design that goes into properly balancing the airflow so that you're getting you know, proper heat, proper cooling. And the same thing kind of applies with your computer. There are a couple of things that are causing a little bit of mismatch in the airflow just using the stock case fans. So the first thing is the Noctua fan is capable of moving a lot more air than the Be Quiet Silent Wings fan. This is a low RPM, 1000 RPM fan. This fan is just not capable of moving as much air as the Noctua fan. So what we're doing is, is we're, we, we've got more air flowing towards the fan than the fan is capable of exhausting out. So what's happening is the air is coming in through the heatsink and it's creating turbulence in the back. There's less air being able to be pulled out than there is being provided. So we want to balance that out. So to do that, we're going to be using a Silent Wings 3 1600 RPM fan. So this is a much higher airflow fan that should be able to match the airflow that's happening with the Noctua fan. The other challenge that we have is that this fan on the left side of the RTX 3090 is pulling in air from the bottom. The, most of the fresh air that's coming in from the front is being sucked up through this fan and then pulled through the heatsink. Again, these are lower RPM fans, so they're not capable of moving as much air. So once the airflow kind of reaches this point, it's being sucked up through the RTX 3090 cooler, which means that there's a bit of a vacuum or void, and I can actually feel the heat on this side. And I can just feel that on my skin, the temperature gradient difference between over here and over here. So what that means is I've got kind of a dead spot here where there's not really any fresh airflow coming in to cool the GPU. So that means the GPU is probably running hotter than it needs to be. And that heat is also soaking into the case and causing the CPU to get hotter. So where the CPU typically runs around 74 degrees during gaming, it'll eventually heat soak and start getting into the high, mid to high 80s. So to alleviate that problem, we're gonna take two Silent Wings 3 1000 RPM fans. So they're a little bit quieter, they're the exact same model as the front fans on the case. We're actually gonna put those on the bottom of the case to draw fresh air in. And what that's gonna hopefully do is get rid of kind of our hotspot void here uh, and allow fresh air to flow through the entire case. We're also gonna be then having more cool intake air, which should offset that we have the higher RPM fans drawing air out the exhaust. And of course, naturally, the hot air is gonna rise and vent out of the top vents and out of the rear of the case. When working with airflow, I prefer to use positive pressure so that we're not sucking any air in where there are no air filters. So let's dive in and get these fans installed so that we can see what kind of difference we're looking at as far as temperatures. So I got all the fans installed and I ran some tests to see if matching up uh, fans with similar airflow in the same locations, uh, moving one exhaust fan up to the top and having two new intake fans at the bottom would make a difference to the internal temperatures. And here are the results. Our CPU package temperatures dropped from 82 to 80 degrees Celsius. Our chipset temperatures dropped from 66 to 63 degrees Celsius. Our motherboard temperatures dropped from 38 degrees to 31 degrees Celsius. The GPU memory junction dropped from 100 degrees Celsius to 98 degrees Celsius. The GPU hotspot temperature dropped from 81.6 to 79. 
The GPU temperature dropped from 70.2 degrees to 67.8 degrees, so we did see several degree drops in overall temperatures, the largest temperature drop being the motherboard from 38 degrees down to 31. So adding some additional fans did help add more fresh intake cool air into the system. Moving another exhaust port to the back is getting some of that hotter air out of the system from where it's kind of at its hottest point. And we even dropped a couple of degrees on the CPU and the GPU. So in the case where you've got a graphics card that brings air in from the bottom, you'll want to add a couple of fans blowing fresh cool air intake into the GPU. That'll give you the optimal temperatures, keeping that GPU cool and keeping that fresh air flowing. You also want to make sure that you have enough exhaust where heat will naturally move up and exhaust out the top of the case and there's venting along the sides and the back of this case. Having an exhaust fan helps move that air a little bit better. I also wanted to see the impact of adding an exhaust fan to the top so I moved the older slower 1000 rpm fan from the back up to the top. What I found is that even with additional intake fans, the air would just cause a lot of turbulence and some of that air was just getting trapped in the case. And I actually saw higher temperatures with just two additional intake fans and no additional exhaust. So by adding the additional exhaust fan, I'm getting the air to move through the case. So our primary exhaust is in the back here and our primary intakes are in the bottom and the front. So that air can really move through the system and exhaust through the back without kind of getting stuck in the system and creating hot spots, vacuum areas, and dead areas. So by having the right mixture of intake and exhaust ports, you can kind of get that air coming into your system and flowing out the exhaust without lingering for too long and creating dead spaces where the air is just kind of a turbulent tornado of heat. When it comes to your particular case, the configuration of the fans is really gonna depend on how your case is configured. If you've got a horizontal GPU where the air needs to come up into the GPU, then you'll want to have some fans bringing in cool air for that graphics card. You'll also want to make sure that you've got the right combination of intake and exhaust ports for your case to ensure that the air doesn't just spin around inside the case. When you're planning the fan layout for your build, just keep in mind that you want to have that air flowing through your case and over all of the components, but you don't want the air to get trapped inside the case. You'll also want to make sure that your processor heatsink has enough supply of cool fresh air that it's able to keep itself cool and also exhaust that out. It's also going to be beneficial to choose an exhaust fan that has the same or similar airflow to the fan being used for your processor's heatsink. That just ensures that again you're reducing the turbulence of the air within your case and ensuring that the air is continuing to flow. So now that I've maximized the airflow in my case, I'm still noticing that the graphics card, the RTX 3090, is still running quite hot. It still has hot memory junction temperatures and its hotspot is still fairly hot as well. The RTX 3090 thermal pads are not the highest end thermal pads that are available. So in a video in a few weeks, I'm gonna go ahead and swap out all the thermal pads on that RTX 3090. I'll do that as kind of a how-to video so that we can try to see how much cooler we can get this computer um, before I'm satisfied that the cooling potential is maxed out. That's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.